Hello and welcome to our play breakdown. And here we are again with uh, Miami and Clemson, and we're still at 0-0. We're on Miami's second defensive possession, and we're going to look at their defense again. So we can start off here by showing the high, the dribble handoff. They actually talk. You see them pointing. They're switching. That's great. Okay, and this is where it starts to break down. So we get a high ball screen here, and number 21 is showing. Now, the offense should know this from their scouting report that uh, Miami shows hard, and this is why this guy slips it. It's a great job of slipping because they know the scouting report, and they know, or even just seeing on the last possession, they see that 21 is going to do a hard show. So what is 21 doing wrong here? Well, we teach that you put your hand on the guy's hip so that this doesn't happen. Because if he starts to go, you can kind of just put a little weight on his hip and he can't backdoor you like this, or cut, I should say. And you have a greater chance of going with him because your arm is already on his hip. But again, if you're not touching him and you're moving the opposite direction, then he makes um, a cut and is wide open. Now, we would like number two to have his hands up or one hand up, excuse me, so that this pass can't go right over his head. You see both hands are down, pass goes right over his head. Okay, so now here is where I have some problems with their defense. Now, this is Division One. I. I coach a much lower level. The shooters are probably better, the guys are longer, but I think this guy right here should be a little closer to the paint in his help side. So... The guy makes a nice pass here, and now, this guy from Clemson, when he catches the ball, he should be squaring up to the basket. Yes, I know this guy is wide open, but he hasn't even looked over his shoulder to see what's going on here on the other side of the floor. Now, why is he looking here? Because again, another strong side help, and completely turns his back yet again. So, we're seeing that Miami here isn't very well disciplined in their strong side help, okay? Because again, this guy goes all the way over, leaving this shooter wide open. Now, maybe the coach of Miami says, you know what, we're so athletic, we can get there in two steps, and we can contest that shot. At my level, we can't. This has to be a bluff and recover for us, okay? But let's look at the next problem, okay? You see the big man who's guarding his guy on the weak side, and what does he do? He comes all the way over to help, okay? Now, I don't know what this guy on offense is doing, but for me, he should stay right there and, and get a dunk or a layup. And for some reason, he decides to run up the floor, which I don't understand, but I don't know their personnel. Maybe he's not a, a guy who can finish well around the basket. But anyway, for, defensively here, when we're beat, we teach, and we actually drill this, kind of a hedge when you're in a two-on-one against you, right? Because we teach that if you come all the way over, then they just drop it off for a dunk or layup. So we teach that you bluff and recover in any kind of two-on-one situation and hope that your defense, that you can just slow them down enough or make this guy pick up his dribble and take a tough shot. But again, he comes all the way over, as you can see, and if this guy had just stayed right there in this little pocket, he would have had a dunk or a layup if, if our offensive player had turned his head like he should have. So for us, like I said, I would have started this guy right here with one foot in the paint, and I would have had this guy bluff and recover. But even if this guy made a mistake and went all the way over because he said, okay, if I don't go all the way over, it's going to be a wide open dunk. Well, had this guy been right there, then he could have taken away this pass and basically what you do is you just want to tag this guy just for a second and be prepared to sprint out to that shooter, okay? So by tagging him, you take away the dunk, and then while the ball is flying in the air across the floor to 15, in theory, he would have time to hopefully get out there and contest that shot. Instead, he's out of position, and luckily for him, once again, um, this guy doesn't turn his head and doesn't see the, the, the basically the three-on-two they would have had right here, right? Him, him, and him versus these three because he's already beat. Instead, he just looks. Look, he finds a wide open shooter, but he, and again, he's taking advantage of another Miami uh, strong side mistake. And, you know, I would say 
at the Division One level, that's a pretty wide open shot right there. Yes, I know by the time he releases, this guy's sort of in his sight line, but that's a pretty wide open shot that I'm pretty sure Clemson's happy with. I mean, look, you see this guy turn and take off. He doesn't even offensive rebound. So they're pretty confident with that. Now, we're not finished yet. Look at this. On the backside here, I mean, look at this. We have four guys, literally five guys ball watching. This number four kind of looks... I mean, kind of puts an arm out to box out, but we have no box out, no box out, no box out. And again, at this level, I know some teams aren't taught to box out because they just say, hey, use your athleticism and go get the ball. But I actually saw a clinic years ago from John Calipari, and he tells his guys, don't box out. He says, use your athleticism, go get the ball. Well, we teach boxing out, and again, you see nobody boxing out, everyone just staring at the ball. And again, this rebounder from the weak side comes over you know he gets inside both defenders and gets really unlucky not to get the ball and Miami comes up with the rebound so we have just major mistakes here with the Miami defense Clemson gets a wide open corner three guy gets his hand because of no box out and somehow uh, Miami survives his possession and still has given up no points um, after this possession.